It is not every day you have the opportunity to play on a golf course that hosts a major championship, but that's the case for our feature destination today. And that's also why I'm working on my putting on these lightning fast and super smooth greens. Please go in. Because the invitation is now yours to tee it up at the same place some of the greats to ever play golf have competed. Welcome to Benton Harbor and Harbor Shores Resort. Welcome to Michigan Golf Live Television, celebrating our 20th season of shining the spotlight on the best places to stay, play, and enjoy the greatest game on earth. Stay connected 24-7 to MGL on Facebook, Twitter, our weekly radio show, and podcasts on the all-new 4golfersnetwork.com. Hello friends and welcome into our program on an absolutely glorious day in Pure Michigan. I'm Bill Hobson and I'm so glad to have you along for our conversation today because one of my favorite things to do is share with you powerful stories where golf combines with a community effort to really make a difference. And that's the case here today as our feature destination is Harbor Shores Resort in Benton Harbor roughly 530-ish acres that years ago brought together the community, a corporation, and the greatest golfer of all time to revitalize, reclaim, and rejuvenate not just the property, but the entire region. Our story today is the story of Harbor Shores, a major championship venue that's open to the public, so yes, you can come here and play. In fact, the very first thing I want to do today is head right to the first tee so we can give you a feel and a flavor for what Jack did with this property. The before picture wasn't pretty, the current picture is gorgeous. So here we are on the first tee and it is time to take out the driver as we begin our tour of this beautiful Jack Nicklaus creation at Harbor Shores. You're going to see a lot of this guy in the moments ahead. Jackson Davison is the head golf professional here. Every story, every hole has a story. What's the story of number one? So the, the story of hole number one is uh, it's a, a good open to the golf course. It helps you understand what might be out there in front of you, but there is going to be a lot of variation. One thing you'll notice here is uh, there is a sculpture uh, symbolizing each hole, and every single one of them has a uh, significance on one of Mr. Nicholas's majors. So How convenient that he has so many of them. Right, 18 specifically. First major, 62 U.S. Open at Oakmont, gets us started here. What's our strategy on number one here at Harbor Shore? Yes, yeah, so the number one, it's a fairly simple tee shot. Just try to keep it left. It's going to help get a good angle into the pin uh, that we got, but so it gets a, a little bit more exciting on the way out. So it's a gentle start that's just kind of getting us loose a little bit. Pending the wind direction is fair, then yes, it is a gentle start today, but some days it is certainly a challenge as well. All right, Jackson, we move to number two. This is a beautiful looking par three from ground level, and I understand it looks even nicer once you get up a bit. Yeah, so the bunkering that you can see from the tee, uh, it's fairly hidden from the tee box, but over overhead, it, it's got a pretty spectacular image. Uh, the bunkering goes all the way up to the hole, all the way up the right side, and it can definitely feel intimidating, but it's something that you don't necessarily uh, see all that while you're there. But, and you don't want to go long, and you got a wind coming out of the north today, so certainly can make for an exciting start. Uh, holes two and three. Let's talk about three for a minute. What's it like? So it's a shorter part four. Uh, it gives you plenty of options off the tee. Uh, if you hit it a little bit longer, you can give the green a shot if you want to hit driver, uh, but be prepared for a fun little chip if you do miss the green. And it also gives you the option to hit an iron off the tee to a comfortable wedge yardage. And it's a really fun wedge shot. Uh, you got the river running up the left. You have OB to the right, so it can certainly uh, pose for a good uh, challenge, but also a great opportunity. You were right about number three being spectacular. Then we step up onto the fourth tee, and I see a par three with some teeth to it. Yeah, absolutely. This is a uh, this is our version of a, a bear trap hole, similar to those that are down in Florida. Uh, we refer to this one that runs a bit of the opposite way, so it runs right to left uh, versus left to right, like some of those holes or those par threes do. We're playing from 192 on these tees today, and it's all carry, man, unless you want to bail out far to the right. Yeah, it gives you at least the option, but if you want to score it well, then you better uh, step up and make a committed swing. And one of the things that I know about Jack's designs is that it's not enough just to get to the green. 
but once you're there, there can also be some more challenge. Yeah, so this is uh, definitely a green where you want to make sure you're putting from the right area and or chipping from the right area, but certainly if you hit a good shot, it is probably one of the flatter ones on the course, so it does give you a good look at it. As we step onto the seventh tee, I have to tell you, Jackson, this looks incredibly intimidating. This is a par four, which I, the first time I drove the course, I thought it was a par five. So break down number seven for us. Yep, so it's our signature hole. It's a par four that you know provides a pretty tough tee shot, but really the kicker of the hole is the second shot. It goes uphill about 40 feet or so and, and typically plays into the wind. So it's certainly a tough shot. Now, what is the aiming point for your tee shot? Uh, you're looking uh, just left of the fairway bunkers that you're seeing out there. Uh, there's bunkers out in the dunes that you can aim at as well. Every once in a while there are holes on a golf course where if you can get away with a par, you feel pretty darn good. I have to think seven is one of those. Yeah, this is definitely one of those where if you walk away with par, it's fantastic. Uh, probably the smallest green on the golf course, uh, which also has the most demanding second shot. So it, it definitely is pretty fun coming out here. And not a bad view beyond the green. Yep, so what you're going to see is uh, you're going to see Gene Clock Park, uh, which was a beach that was not accessible prior to these holes being built. Uh, and that was part of the big development was uh, the agreement that we would maintain that beach. Uh, and it's transformed into one of the finest beaches in the entire state now. A lot of hard work went into that. And a little bit of hard work will go into playing number seven as well. But what a view and what a great part of the story here of the reclamation and revitalization of this community. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, one of the big parts is that uh, while we do maintain the beach and while we do maintain the park, uh, the community benefits directly through parking uh, revenues and that stuff goes straight back into the community. And then take us on the, the, the number nine, the challenge of that par five. Yeah, it also starts with the tee shot here sitting actually higher up than we are now. Um, so you're at an extreme elevation in the tee shot and it's a, a really fun tee shot to hit down the hill. And if you hit it in the fairway, you have a chance at uh, hitting it up out of green, but certainly, again, the layup is everything on, this, uh, on these par fives. And if you can get yourself a good number, it's a really fun wedge shot to hit into the green. All right, <laughs> you just burned the edge. So now this putt to win the side, the biggest putt of my career. Well, We've done it. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the front night here at Harbor Shores. Jackson, thank you for the guided tour, man. This is a stunning beginning to our round. Absolutely, and we appreciate you coming out. You guys will have some fun going into the back nine. Yeah, we're going to see him again in a couple of moments because we have a, a historic moment to recreate when we get to number 10. And a little later on, we will take you on 10 through 18. But first, when we come back, we're gonna paint the picture of this incredible story of Harbor Shores Resort with a very special guest. So don't go away. As we continue here in Benton Harbor from Harbor Shores, you can pay me, pay me later. <laughs> you got it, thank you. Welcome back into the program and our special look at Harbor Shores Resort in Benton Harbor. In a few moments, we'll take you out on the back nine to complete our tour of this marvelous Jack Nicklaus creation. But up first, there's so much more to this story than just golf. This Harbor Shores Resort is part of a revitalization of an entire community. And it's a story that if you really want to enjoy your experience here, it's a story that needs to be told. So let's tell it. And the idea wasn't just to build a golf course. The idea was that if we built a great golf course, we would get housing at, at all different affordable levels. We, we would get uh, commerce. We would create employment. We would create a tax base for our three municipalities, which benefits the schools and, and everything else. And we would do it not only to help the people in the community, but also the kids in the community. And so, you know, the purpose of this was to make our community a great place to, to live, to invest, to retire, and really grow its position as a tourism destination in the Midwest. How often do you find yourself just, just shaking your head in amazement well, at what's here now? You know, yeah, you know, it is pretty incredible. I, t I tell people, particularly people who come here for the first time, and they're generally very complimentary about you know what a, what a beautiful area, what a beautiful, great golf course, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I said, well, uh, thank you very much. And, and those are really 
nice compliments. If you were here 20 years ago, you would just say it's a miracle. And that's kind of how we feel like uh, in terms of, for those who remember what was here before to what it is now, it is something quite special. I thought they were never going to succeed because it was during the recession, as you'll recall. And we were really disappointed with that thought. And then we came back to this, at the time it was half a golf course. But even the half a golf course that was available in 2010 was just spectacular. We, I don't know what they did to get this project through the recession and be successful, but they managed to do it. It was a massive undertaking. And I understand, I, I did work in the environmental area when I was still working, and I understand it was one of the biggest Brownfields grants ever given by the federal government which tells you something about the size of the problem that was on this site that they had to manage. It's ultimately, you know, with Whirlpool Corporation saying, this is our home, we're not leaving. You know, when you had all these other factories and businesses leave and it kind of abandoned the area um, and all these jobs leave along with it, you know, Whirlpool stepped up and said, no, this is home, we're gonna make sure that we put something in place here that continues to drive, you know, economic stability in the area, drives jobs, education, and opportunities uh, for youth to develop and grow. You know what's amazing is to think that literally where we are seated right now was the remnants of factories. This, this was rubble. And now look at it. Yeah, I mean, 30 years ago, this was, uh, this was a desolate, uh, abandoned factory that made auto parts. So, you know, you look at it now and you look at uh, some of the before uh, footage that we have of the area and things like that. It, it is truly a miracle of what has transformed here at Harbor Shores and it's going to continue to grow. Well, if I am going to come here and play a couple times, I might want to stay the night. So what options are available for our viewers to come and stay the night? Sure. We, we, a bit. we, uh, we, we offer a few opportunities for lodging here. We opened our Champions Villa uh, last year and those have been going extremely well. We also have a 92 room in at Harbor Shores that offers uh, a different uh, selection of, of rooms and styles that can accommodate all groups. We have discovered that the restaurant here is really quite good. I don't know if it's a hidden secret or not because we've discovered it, but uh, that's another kind of asset of the club for members and guests. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the focuses has always been that, you know, you want to provide of course, top-notch service and product, and, and whether it's the golf course, whether it's you know your interaction with guest services, but also food and beverage. And you know the, the goal has always been that we want the restaurant to stand on its own and almost be like its own property. That it's not just an asset to the golf club, but it it, it kind of shines in its own light. What would you say Jack Nicholas did with this property? Uh, he transformed into something uh, incredible uh, for the community, especially. Uh, that's one of the reasons we joined. You know, we love to play golf and it also helps the community too. What do you most remember about the first time you set foot on the golf course here at Harbor Shores? Yeah, I mean when I first came here, not only was I extremely excited to be here, but it was extremely unique to see how the golf course winded through such an interesting and large piece of property. So I was impressed just with the creativity. I was impressed with the remembrance on every hole and I was impressed with uh, just the quality and, and design of, of what it actually took to build such good holes. Yeah, bringing together 530 something acres in all these different parcels, um, it's kind of a mind blowing design concept just to make it all work. Yeah, so they, it, they had to go through a lot to purchase each individual parcel uh, when it came to acquiring this property and start the, the whole process. And, you know, with that comes many different renditions of, of the routing, the layout. Uh, it also makes it a little tricky for the designer. Um, so the golf course does wind through a couple of different segmented pieces of property. Uh, the first five holes winds through the inlands. Uh, then you get out by the dunes. Those are called our dunes holes. And then you wind through the trees, which kind of gives you a little bit more of a, a Michigan golf type feel. And then you uh, finish along the Pawpaw River, which is extremely fun, creates a lot of excitement, so. Ah, it's the most beautiful place to live in the world. It's a lot of nature. Obviously, I have a golf view of Harbor Shores. Uh, we have wonderful people that live in this community and a lot of great things, wineries, breweries, great restaurants. This is just a great place to live. Well, now that you have a bit of a feel for the scope of this project and the impact on the Benton Harbor community as a whole, it's time for us to make the turn and head out to the back nine, where in just a couple of moments, 
we're going to attempt to recreate a moment in golf history that's been witnessed literally by millions of people around the world. And we'll also show you the entire back nine. Before we do though, I'm gonna freshen up inside here. We're staying on the grounds in the Champions Villa. And just between you and me, I'm not even a champion, but apparently you can stay in here as well. What a great way to set up your group when you come to Harbor Shores for a stay and play. We're back with more after this. Welcome back into the show as we head down the home stretch of not only this program, but also our round here at Harbor Shores Resort in Benton Harbor, this beautiful Jack Nicholas masterpiece. On the front night, I had a special guide with me, Jackson Davison. Now, a more special guide here on the back night, the general manager of this wonderful place, Josh Dockstader. And uh, what are we in store for here on the back? Well, you know, Jack got very creative, as you can see, on the first nine holes, and it, it doesn't stop there. On the back nine, we, uh, we meander through the woodlands, and then we uh, finish along the Paw, Paw River. Uh, and then, of course, we start here on number 10, where uh, one of the most watched videos on YouTube happened where Jack made the putt. And back in 2010, the designer of this golf course, Jack Nicholas, was basically being called out by his fellow playing partners who said this green is impossible, and Jack did this. Yeah, show me how to do it. And he, he went down and just whacked the butt, went in from about 100, I don't know, 110 feet or something like that. Hey guys, Jack made it look pretty easy. I, I can't imagine that the three of us don't just make one on top of the other, right? So Jackson, go ahead, you're up first. Uh, this is for uh, 50 cents. He's giving it a hammering, and that's gonna come right back down to see Daddy. Or it went almost in the bunker. All right, good run at it. Good run at it. Nothing to hang your head on there. I may not get any closer. Let's see. Josh has got to have to give a full shoulder turn to this one. We may be, we may be seeing two of them short. Oh, that one is actually in the bunker. All right. I appreciate you guys leaving the green cleared for me. I'm going to hit this exceedingly hard, I hope. All right, Jack, we're gonna give you a run for your money. That's not gonna get up there either. Climb, baby, climb. Well, guys, the lesson that we have just learned, hang on, I may be as far away from my next putt, is that as it turns out, there's a reason Jack is called the goat. He just stepped up and on the fly, made it on his first try. And as you saw in the video, once the putt went in, he just went, what? What's so hard about that? All right, on to number 11. This view from the 11th tee is so cool. It's so special and it's, it looks impossible. It's not, it's a wedge, even though some people have been known to miss the green once in a while. What's this 11th hole like for you? What do you how do you describe it? You know, a lot's based on the wind. Um, you know, if it's coming out of the north, it, it creates a much more challenging shot. And you know, if it's out of the south, then you know, you, you have to flutter something up there. But pin location is everything on 11. If it's in the back right, you have a lot of help from the banks out there. If it's actually up front, it's probably one of the more difficult locations. And some people have been known to visit that guardian bunker down on the right side, which today leaves a little bit of a challenge for an up and down. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, um, as you know, you hit it there and, and then you hit a great shot and you use the banks that were put in place on the green to get it close to the hole. It's no editing, part. no editing involved in that shot, by the way. Not at all. In either one. You told me that you love number 12, one of your favorite holes out here. Why is that? Well, typically, you know, uh, Jack designs golf courses that move left to right, you know, and favors a fade and things like that. And, and 12 is a true sweeping left par four where you have to hit a shot off the tee. Can you hit a fade? Yes. But does it make it more difficult? Yes. Uh, but if you hit a, you know, a, a good draw around the bunker line there, you put yourself in a, in a short uh, wedge situation. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to make a birdie and it just sets up really well. As we step on the 14th tee, you may have noticed throughout our round today, both on the front and back nines, young man in the blue Harbor Shores bibs because Justin is our four caddy. And Josh, do I have your permission to, to bring him in as a guest star for this hole? I'm fully confident he can give you everything you need. Yeah, we want to know the story of number 14. What happened here before it became a beautiful par four? So before coming a par four and the creation, it used to be just almost like a public waste. 
there was, they took $15 million and removed enough trash to fill a football field 70 feet tall. So this was a, just a disaster. It was almost a public dump. Wow. Okay, so now it's a beautiful par four. What's the strategy off the tee for playing it? Everything is gonna funnel to the right, so aiming on the left half of the fairway here is the play. And then once you hit it out into the fairway, your approach shot, you're going to have a green that just funnels down to the right. Although it is very intimidating with trouble on the left and water on the right, if you just stay focused on the fairway, it is an easier one to hit. The breeze off the lake works in our favor on 15 tee today, which is kind of nice, a par five. And after a Josh hits a bomb off the tee, it's actually reachable with a, with a mid iron. That's rare for a par five. It's not only rare, it's rare for me. Um, <laughs> no, it, you, like you said, it depending upon how the winds are coming in off the lake. Uh, today, 15 played a little bit downwind, which helped. Uh, but again, the uh, the approach shot to the green is, is very difficult. It's very demanding. You, you don't have a lot of room to miss, maybe a little bit right of the green. Uh, but if you put it there, and you could secure birdie uh, at the most par. My goal is <clears> to <throat> not raise the water level by depositing a golf ball in it. Um, and then once we do get across the penalty area, we got a little bit of challenge left up there on this green because that's what Jack brings us on pretty much every green. Yeah, absolutely. Again, knowing where the pin location is makes a huge difference. And, and you know, I alluded to it before, the more you play it, the better you get at playing the golf course because you know where to hit it and where not to hit it. Um, I'm not saying that every golfer can hit it where they want to. If they could, they'd probably be uh, in a little bit different environment. But uh, at the same time, uh, having that knowledge helps you to play a little bit better round out here and makes you feel a little bit better about your game. We step on the 16th tee. What's the challenge that faces us? 16th tee, another dog leg left, but it's it's all hazard left. So uh, you do have a couple options. You can hit it straight down the middle of the fairway with a hybrid uh, or a long iron, or if you want to take a little piece off of it, hit driver. Uh, with this wind today, it could be very difficult. But then putting yourself in a position, you have a shorter iron into that green. Uh, that green complex, again, offers a lot of different pin locations, and knowing where it is helps. It's very interesting to see how differently the course plays depending on the direction of the breeze. And being this close to the big lake, that's going to be a variable pretty much every time out. It's a different course every time you play. Absolutely. You know, and that's the thing too about weather here off of Lake Michigan. You know, we'll have storms come over the lake and, and they'll just disappear. Um, and very rarely do we have storms that'll, that'll build up over the lake and then hit us. So we're very fortunate to be in a position in southwest Michigan where uh, the weather usually misses us, uh, but we're going to see wind pretty much every day. We talked earlier about how good the par threes are out here. Number 17, especially with that Sunday hole location, is quite a test. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're, and of course, today we hit it into a north wind, so it added a few more yards. But, you know, with that back right pin location, um, you know, you, you have to be extremely precise on where you hit that shot to give yourself a chance of birdie. I know we're near the lake, so I've chosen the beach for my approach on 17, which is always a fun test of your game and trying to get it up and down for par. And then we've got one left, the home hole, number 18. Great way to test yourself at the end. Walk us through 18. Yeah, you know, I, I, I kind of go back to, you know, uh, in the Kitchen 8 Senior PGA Championship. If you're holding the lead by one coming into 18, it's going to test everything you've got mentally and, and physically. Um, you have, of course, Hazard right with the Paw Paw River. you got Hazard left uh, with Wetlands. Uh, you have to hit a pre precise tee shot. Uh, and then even from there, it's, it's no uh, walk in the park on the way home to the green. Hey, now that's not a bad way to end the day. Not at all. Josh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the hospitality and the guided tour around the final nine here. This is, I mean, I know it's a major championship venue, but this is fun for golfers, whether they are well known or if they're just getting started in the game. What a great course. Yeah, absolutely. With, with all the different yardages that we offer out here, it's, you know, it is fun for everyone. And you have the opportunity to play the golf course from different places, different spots. Um, and again, the more you play it, the better you get at it, and the more creative you get around the golf course as well. So many people have heard about the legend of what Jack did with this property. Hopefully now we've given you a good feel for what it's like. Yeah, thank you very much. We appreciate you coming out, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Well, we have now shared with you really the full origin story of the beautiful Harbor Shores Resort. And I want to make one thing perfectly clear if you haven't already figured this out. This is a public golf facility. You are invited to come and play. And as Jack Nicholas himself said, the beauty of the course will only be rivaled by the experience of playing it. So make sure you go to harborshoresresort.com and make your tea time. And we'll see you down the road in Benton Harbor at this beautiful place.